Hey guys, Tavares here from Godly Dating. You know, I just wanted to leave a quick video. It's been forever, and this is something we're trying to get back into, making this a habit, making this something that we do consistently. So, I want you to ask this person. If some, anyone in your life expresses interest in you, whether you pursued her or she did something that showed interest, there are 10 questions you should ask someone who expresses interest in you. Number one, did you pray before pursuing me? I say this because, let's be honest, people do not pray before they make any decisions. They simply just go out. You know, they, they just start dating and when it fails, then all of a sudden they want to pray. All of a sudden, when it doesn't work out, they want to seek advice. You know, when they fell into sin, now they want to bring people in. But no, did you pray before seeking me? And praying doesn't guarantee that person is your spouse, but it does guarantee you're going into it with a spiritual mindset and you're allowing God to lead your footsteps. So that should be number one. Did you pray before coming to me? Number two. Are you single? And I don't mean single as in you want to hook up. No. Are you single? Are you not married? Is there someone in your life that thinks you guys are dating? Is there some other woman that, you know, she's posting about you on social media, but we don't know because her page is locked? Are they single? You know, fellas, ask this question because these girls are these girls are something. And ladies, you need to ask because you know these dudes are trifling. So please, are you single? Do you have a wife I don't know about? Do you have a girlfriend in Guatemala? What is it? You know, are you single? Are you free? Are you emotionally unattached? Are you spiritually unattached? Is there any drama I need to be aware of? Number three, how's your personal devotion at home? Because so many people are spiritual in church. That does not mean they're spiritual at home. So you need to figure out, are they reading? Are they studying? Are they fasting? You know, are they doing any of these things? How is their personal devotion at home? Because who we are in church isn't always the same person we are when we leave the building. So they need to have some form of consistency before they invite you into their dysfunction. Number four, how involved are you in your local church? I know so many people, they're, they're under the delusion that they don't have to go to church because we are the church. Yes, and while that sounds good and while that is true, you still need to be a part of a church. You still need to be involved. You cannot make it to heaven on your own. God didn't create you to be alone. God created us all for community. We all may not get married, but we are all a part of the body of Christ. So how are you involved in the body of Christ? Because you don't want to find somebody that's so idle and someone that's just not doing anything, but they want a spouse. It's like, no, God created Adam with a purpose before he brought Eve. So let's get the, the order correct. If you want a spouse, you should at least be active in your church. Does your, does your leadership trust you? Does people, do people in your church know they can count on you? Who are you inside your local church? Because if you're a player at church, don't try to be spiritual online, bro. Just saying. Five, what do you believe? And this is not something that's you trying to figure out their denomination or their doctrine or whatever. We literally go to church with people that sit right beside us and do not believe the Bible is God's word. We sit beside people that don't believe everything in the Bible is true. We sit beside people that even though they believe everything in the Bible is true, they still accept a lot of culture's lies. They still accept a lot of tradition over scripture. So you need to figure out what do they believe? What are their views on how the marriage should be set up? What are their views on who's going to be working or... Am I not supposed to work? Am I, is the wife just supposed to, you know, cook and clean? You need to be asking questions because you don't want to get married and realize that you guys went there with two different mindsets and one person is trying to dominate or control and then you're left wondering, God, why me? Number six, who are you accountable to? And I say, who are you accountable to? Because you all need to be accountable to someone. I need to be accountable to someone. My wife needs to be accountable to someone. We all need to be accountable to someone and ultimately to God because we don't want to get into a relationship whereas the person doesn't have any spiritual leadership or spiritual friends. So their lives are bombarded with all kinds of attacks and they have no one they can trust. So you have to be accountable to someone so when your relationship has issues, you have someone that you can turn. Seven, have you release the baggage and insecurities of your past. It doesn't matter who you think you are. We all have our issues. We all have some dilemmas. We all have some problems from childhood or problems or some seeds that were planted in our minds and it took root, you know, and it's allowed us to view things not the way that God wanted them. So have you dealt with those issues or are you just going to project them on them? Number eight, which is a hard one. Do you struggle with lust, pornography, masturbation, or anything of the sort? Um, eh, let's just be real. Or do you struggle with homosexuality or lesbianism? You know, because a lot of people, they don't want to discuss this in church. But I know of a lot of people that get married and all of a sudden their spouse is gay. No, they were probably struggling with that prior to the marriage. They were probably struggling with these issues way before you met them. So you need to figure out, like, 
maybe I can help or maybe I can point you to someone who will help. But if these people have struggles and they're not working on their struggles, it's only going to get worse when you're in the mix. Because if I can't control my my temptation without a woman, it's way worse when I'm around a woman. You know, so we have to learn how to control our urges before we pursue it. Number nine, where do you work or where do you go to school? Because I'm going to be real with you, love does not pay the bills. Love will not work when it's time for that 20 20 hundred that car payment or that rent or that mortgage or whatever the case may be to come in uh, baby I love you it's not going to get you a home it's gonna have you homeless and you all are gonna love one another in your car so you have to realize that someone had if he doesn't have to be the richest she doesn't have to have all the money in the world but you have to have something lined up because you don't want your marriage your marriage to fail because of finances because God brought you together but you also have to have things put together you don't have to be the richest but you have to have something going you have to work on something you have to be doing something before inviting someone in and then you're not able to provide for that person or you're not able to assist that person so and if you're not working it's fine are you in school are you pursuing any higher education are you learning any trade do you have your own personal business you're working on because you may be at the bottom of the barrel right now and someday become a millionaire. Who's to say you have to be in school or who's to say you have to work XYZ job, but you have to be doing something. Love does not pay the bills. And 10, what is your goal for us? Because I want to make it clear, so many people are in relationships with people that do not want to be in a relationship, you know, because they're thinking we're going towards marriage and the person is thinking, I just want to have fun. I just want to have sex. I just want to pass time. So you need to be clear. What is your intention for us? Like you're 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 pursuing me, or you're striking up a conversation. Where do you see this going? What, five years from now, are we still dating? Ten years from now, are we still just texting? Like, what is this? Is it going somewhere? Hey, listen. I know it was quick. I know those aren't everything you need to ask the person. There are tons more. If you know of any questions you want to ask the person, or someone should ask, comment below. But I want you to know that you have to ask those questions. You have to have clarity on those if you want your relationship to go forward. So. Hope you asked them. Let me know if it backfires. <laughs> Let me know if you asked your partner and you realized that it helped you all or you realized it caused a problem because they really were not the one for you. Comment below. Subscribe. We'll see you next time. Peace.